Hey, what's up everyone? So in the last video, we created this button here and all it does is print out something that says this is the Python button. So now we actually have to wire this up to actually invoke a Python toolbox. Um, but before that, we actually need to create a Python toolbox. So uh, let me just quickly go over how we can do that in Pro because I, th I think it's useful to know. Um, so if you just open up a new Pro project and right click and say new Python toolbox, now this is a little bit different than a, a traditional toolbox. I think in my old YouTube videos, I was making uh, toolboxes with Python scripts, but this is different because uh, Python toolboxes actually create just one PYT file and it, it's directly um, editable in like a text editor. So I just, this is where this project, my project 12 exists in this location. And you can see here, now we have this PYT file. Whereas before, uh, with the other toolbox, we would have a TBX file that you can't actually edit. You know, it's not Python. You can't just open it up and edit it like this. Um, so that's what's cool about PYT is you can kind of treat it uh, like just like Python. So um, let's go ahead and just rename this toolbox. I think I'll call it um, YouTube uh, Toolbox. And now if we actually want to change the name of it, we're going to have to actually edit the code. So I'm going to hit edit. And I think since I have a Python editor installed, I think it's going to try to open that up in PyCharm for me, but you could just open it up in notepad like this as well. Um, but yeah, see it's opening up in PyCharm. But let's just take a look at what, how the structure of these PYT files is. So every time you make a Python toolbox, it's always gonna give you this boilerplate structure. And this is important to keep like this. Uh, but the important thing is, there's really two uh, key points here. Is the first one is get parameter info. So this is how you can get information from a user, like in a toolbox. And then we have the actual execute. This is where you take the parameters that you got from the user and actually do something. Um, so actually I need to change my interpreter here because it's not using the ArcGIS one version of Python. Um, and yeah, if you're using PyCharm, you're gonna have to give it the Python that comes with ArcGIS Pro, which usually is in this location here. Um, and I'll just show you what I mean by that. If you go to settings, this is just for uh, PyCharm specifically, but if you go to Pro, uh, project Python interpreter here. You just need to tell it what Python you want to use. Um, so now, now what we can do is we can actually change the name of the tool. So if we don't want it just to say tool here, how we would do that, we would go here and you can just change the label to, let's call it my tool. That should fix that. If you just refresh this now, now it's called my tool. So let's go back here. Uh, let's just leave all this the same. So now we, we actually just have to get the uh, something from the user. So we need to get a string from them. So let me Google the syntax for that. So Python toolbox ArcGIS. And this is what we're using create a new Python toolbox. Um, we need to get parameters. So defining parameters, I can't remember the syntax for it, but this is it. This is what we need. Uh, this is it right here. Um, I'm trying to find one that's already a string. All right, that's fine. We'll just grab this and I'll show you what this is doing. So we don't want params to equal none. So let's paste this in here. And we're gonna make params equal to a list. And it's, we're going to add each input. So let me add, um, I'm gonna call this input one instead of param zero. Oops, input one. And we want this to be a string, not a GP feature layer. So just type in string. Okay, and let's just see what that does. So let's go back to pro. 
refresh this and double click the tool. And in theory, we should see, there we go. We see our tool, our uh, input parameter. Now, just to prove to you that we can add another one real simple, real simply, let's just copy and paste this. Call this input two, input features two, um, in features two, direction input. And, okay, and then we just have to add it to this params array here, input two, and that should do it. So let's rerun this. I think I have to refresh it. Okay, so there we have two inputs now. All right, so now let's actually do something. So I think earlier in the in the video, I, I told you, uh, I showed you that we could just print this a hundred times. So now it's it's not doing anything, um, and it's complaining because we didn't put anything here. But this isn't going to do anything yet. So let's go back here and down to the execute portion. So we're going to need to work with the params. So as input, we need params here, not parameters. And let's just say arcpy. Oh no, actually we need to retrieve the parameters. So I forget the syntax for that. But let me see here. Accessing parameters within a Python toolbox. Uh, here's how you do it. So let's copy this. And let's just say um, input one equals that and then input two is going to equal the second one and it's complaining here because I have it named differently params params and this the second input is going to be the second index so the zero and one is referring to this is zero this is one so if we added another input we would add input three here and that would be two down here. Okay, so now let's just try arcpy dot add message and we'll say this is input one uh, and we'll just use an f string which just allows you to use variables inside a string input one and we'll add the second one I guess we can just do it like this. So slash n and say this is input two. And we'll give it input two. All right, that looks good. So let's give this a try. We'll reload the toolbox. All right, uh, franchise nine, two, three say is YouTube or let's just say it is cool all right let's see if this gave us the expected output yep so this is input one and this is input two and the reason we have a little space here is because I added a space like that all right um, so now that we have a tool up and running I, I was thinking about doing like making a better tool but I don't the point of this is to get this working in uh, C Sharp and the Pro add-in. So for now, let's just leave this as is. Um, but for now, I'm gonna cut the video off because it's already uh, eight minute or actually nine minutes. And in the next video, we're gonna take this PYT tool and uh, wire it up right here. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.